<laughs> Alright, starting over. This is part 5 of my Mega Man X 100% speedrun tutorial. Uh, part 5 is going to cover, cover Flame Mammoth, both the Iceful and Iceless sections. They're not terribly different. You just don't have Boomerang if you're doing Iceful. So, um, let's just dive right in. First thing you're going to notice on Flame Mammoth is that we've got these conveyor belts. Um, some moving to the right, some moving to the left. Uh, we're going to use these to our advantage in some places. Um, you get a little speed boost, right, if you're dashing along a conveyor that is moving the same direction you're dashing, which is always going to be to the right for the most part. So. Um, whenever we get a chance, we kind of want to stay on these conveyors, stay on the ground. Which is kind of against some of our previous movement ideas, which was to do dash jumps. Whereas here we might want to just chain two dashes across this because it's going the same direction as us. Whereas on this one, we don't want to dash at all because it's slowing us down. We want to do immediate jumps out of, out of dashes to avoid being on the conveyor that's going the wrong way. And that's going to occur a few times in this stage. So, um, <clears throat> in order to optimize that, there's a couple different ways you can uh, sort of maximize the amount of time you get to spend on these conveyors. One is with a nice shot to take this guy out. You want to dash first, I think. Dash jump here, land, dash and shoot. And it should take out these guys usually. The only problem with that strat is that these guys can drop the ammunition, which is going to slow you down, obviously, because it takes time to refill, unless you can avoid it like that. But the idea being that you want to kill this guy so that you can land on the far left edge of this and spend as much time as possible on this conveyor, going the proper direction. So, in order to do that, we can, you, know, you don't want to shoot too soon like this or something. Um, again, this is using the same idea about how the ricochets of the ice shot can make the ice shot actually extremely powerful. Um, with these guys falling from above, they can actually land on top of your ice shot, causing the ricochets to all do damage as well and take out things like these Burroughs heads that wouldn't normally be taken out in one ice shot. You can actually take them out with one if they land on it. So. Um, if you're into that, you can use ice. I don't use ice. I, I come into the stage holding a charge and fire a green shot as I'm jumping up here with a few extra lemons. And that's mostly just to prevent um, ammo drops from slowing me down. So this is probably the better strat than the ice shot. You only need to be on this conveyor if you jump from the far right side of this first conveyor. You only need to be on the second one for exactly one jump. And you can make it to the next section. I usually do a little sh short dash after I land here. Rather than an immediate dash jump, I do a, a tiny dash just to ensure that I make it up here and don't end up, you know, down below. Like so. Um, here, it's up to you. There's a top route and bottom route here. Top route saves minimal amount of time. And it's for the same reason as, as those earlier ones. This conveyor moving to the right actually gives you a little extra speed. Bottom route is really easy and highly recommended for anybody just learning the game to just stick to bottom route. All you gotta do for bottom route is simply jump down here, oops, just chain some dashes underneath, and you're gone. Um, if you want to slightly optimize your bottom round, you can do like a, a dash jump in there where you've got room. Pretty simple. Top route's a little more complicated and saves very few frames, but I go for it. Anybody looking to be super optimal should probably go for it. Um, there's a couple different ways to do it. Again, we can use... Get out of here. Get out. Oh my god. Laser bullet. Um, 
we can again we can use ice with proper timing so that these guys land on it. Obviously I'm bad. <laughs> I'm really bad apparently. Um, we can use ice to take out this first guy so that he doesn't get in our way. Again for the second guy. And then we want to swap to boomerangs, which is just one swap left and fire two of them to take out this last guy. Whether it's a blue guy or a new two head, it's going to take out both of them. But you'll notice on this first conveyor, I'm doing two dash jumps because it's moving left. I don't want to be dashing across this. I want to be jumping. Avoiding the conveyor. And this one, I want to stay on the ground because it's moving the direction I want to go, so it speeds me up. Right? Makes sense? jumps, dash across this one, two boomerangs, and you can make it all the way to here if you jump from the very edge. If you jump a little early, you're going to end up sliding down this wall, which is going to cost you some time. Pretty dumb. You know, you look kind of silly doing that. Probably lose most of the time you gained, if not all of it, by doing top row. So, um, I shot, I shot, two boomerangs, and we're here. Or, if you want to be like me, lasers dude okay. if you want to be like me I use a blue shot to take out if it's a blue guy it'll take him out a blue shot and a lemon if it's a red guy a new two head you can actually get a zip through him it's a little tighter but you can zip through him and it's just a tiny zip so it doesn't save much but it's, it's these minor time saves that result in really good runs but even top level guys like Bob has got the third place time on the leaderboards right now. He does bottom rounds. So top route is by no means required to get a good time. But I just want to showcase all this. Stuff. So this is my strat. Um, I don't know that. A blue shot in the lemon for the first guy. It'll take out a blue guy if it's a blue guy. The timing is kind of weird. You gotta release him towards the top, but not so late that that happens where the lemon misses. It takes out a blue guy, but it leaves the Utu head for the zip. And then from there, it's the same as other top rounds. Swap the ice. If you miss, you can get lucky, and that'll happen. You'll hit the coat hanger behind him and still kill whatever's in your way. Oops. It's pretty much the same. You just start with the blue shot and a lemon instead of the ice shot to give yourself a chance at a new two zip if he's there. Hello Tiki. Hello Jotham. Hello Prodigy. Um, this next part, we've talked about it briefly before. Um, Pre-acceleration on, on downward sections, like for this section. You're gonna, the goal is to get down as fast as possible so that you can get to this corner and move right. Again. So in order to achieve that at, at optimally, you want to do a big jump beforehand so that X has already started building downward momentum before he even comes to this corner. With the idea being that you just barely clear this corner with max fall speed already. So that as soon as you get to where you can go down, you're already going down as fast as you can. And this is a recurring theme throughout the game and other games of a similar nature. Um, you'll see it in games like Super Metroid and stuff like that. Um, the, the cue I use for it is I'm looking at this this vertical line in the background here. It's sort of X's front knee when he's in this dash posture. So like when his front knee touches that line is when I jump. And I just do a full height jump. And I'll usually be pretty close to clearing that optimally. And then obviously you're going to have to let go of right. But you also want to sort of clear this corner as tightly as possible while maintaining dash speed. Touching the wall is a, is a big no-no because you'll lose dash speed and you'll have to fall the rest of the way without being to able to progress right as quickly. So, shoot. So, um, just some simple movement tech. 
jump early and press right with good timing so that you can start moving right again as soon as possible. Pretty simple. A couple chain dashes. Uh, we want to get right here. You don't want to go too far to the right, though it, it might make it easier to make this jump if you go further to the right, just to give yourself more timing, but optimally you're just going to want to land here and turn around immediately and go up. Now this jump can be a little tricky, especially if you've got some sort of input delay or something. I know I struggled with it a lot when I was playing on uh, an LCD before I got my CRT. Um, obviously you can make adjustments accordingly, but uh, it's pretty easy if you don't have the input delay screwing you over. So, um, getting up upstairs here to the, the Buster Upgrade Capsule, there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, the new friendly way is to just get up here, get a hold of it, come on, and just start mashing jump. Hoping to break the blocks. Find your way up the hole here. Now this is obvious, this is kind of ugly and it's kind of slow and it makes it a little harder to get down afterwards because you only leave yourself a one block window. Um, but it's going to be mostly safe. Now, a better way to go about doing this is that you can sort of slide underneath blocks and still kick off of them so that you're breaking them with your helmet instead of just hoping to find your way up a hole. Or you can just do it like that, which is crazy. That's pretty rare. Well, you notice you can kick blocks from underneath them. I say it's rare and then I get it twice in a row, or two out of three. Um, so yeah, you can sort of slide underneath them. Now this this is a predicament you might find yourself in. You might think you not you can't get up there anymore, but as long as there's one of the two bottom blocks left, you can still get up there. It's once uh, once both of the bottom blocks are gone, you're no longer able to get up there. Now I can't get up there. So if that happens, it's either a reset and pass her back in, or you finish the stage and revisit, or you just start the whole run over. But you'll notice, see that? I can sort of slide off the block and then kind of kick from underneath it. And once you figure that out, that'll make this section a lot faster than, uh, than just sort of trying to mash your way up in there. I keep getting this. Why can't I do that in runs? That'd be so fast. Anyway, once we get it up in here, we're just holding left and hitting jump. Maybe, maybe let go left a little bit, so that we want to break all these blocks for it, so that we can escape cleanly. <clears throat> um. Anyways, so there's a, a slightly faster way as well, also twice as cool. Um. Where we use a dash jump with no D-pad to avoid breaking a few blocks on the left side so that we can use them as a platform jump rather than a wall kick. Because as we've discussed before, wall kicks are always going to be slower than jumping off of a platform, something, some, some sort of ground. So in order to do that, we want to get in. The first one that goes in is a, is a regular kick. Hold on, I can't remember. No. Once, we, once we've gotten in here, like that, once we've cleared these, this bottom row of blocks, we do a dash kick with no D-pad, and then we kick off the right side so that we land on top of these blocks that we left behind. Now we want to do a dash jump straight up to clear the last two, and then hit left to go to the capsule. So again, at full speed here, dash kick, kick the right side, 
and clear the rest of the blocks. Now it makes the escape a little tighter because you gotta you gotta hit that hole on the way down cleanly, otherwise you'll land on top like that and lose some speed that way. But in the end you're not gonna lose much time because as I'll show in a moment, you're gonna end up waiting for a charge to build later, and that time is just sort of lost in that. So the fastest way to get up here is going to be like like this. Well, and it also kind of depends on, on what kind of break you get immediately. Um, what kind of climb you're going to have. Like this is the one I like where you get like three of the bottom blocks with the first kick. Instead of this one where I only got... <clears throat> the one, because now now my jump isn't going to get me all the way to the capsule, it's just going to get me here and I can dash, whereas with this break, well, now the, the two blocks are actually one block higher, so I can just take this dash jump all the way to the capsule, and this is all about just finding the right timing of when to press jump over here, and it's not going to be the same every time, but... get it pretty consistent. Okay, moving on. Um, up here we got our buster capsule. And just hold start through the text. Get the capsule, get your upgrade. Now it's gonna do this little demo or whatever. As, as X is shooting his pink shot, you wanna hold dash and shoot so that you immediately take off. As soon as you regain control, you'll just take off. You want to shoot, fall cleanly down this gap, and again, start moving right as soon as you can. And you want to swap to ice. Now, the reason we're building a charge is so we can kill this guy with an ice sled. And we need this ice sled to get up to this corner above me, like so. And this is where the differences between iceless and ice bolt are going to come into play. Uh, the way I do this ice sled, if you escape cleanly, you're going to have to wait. If you don't touch the wall or anything, you're going to have to wait for your charge to build. And I just do that by doing a little bit of a walk here at the end for my charge to build. And then what I'll do is I'll just dash straight off this, no jump. Um, and shoot the sled right, at, right into the guy. And then I'll kick the wall. And you don't have to like wait for the sled to build, you can stand in the middle of it and it'll put you on top when it's ready. Um, this guy can drop ammo, it's beneficial to avoid, but not always that easy. But this is the easiest way I've found to do this ice sled. Now, from this ice sled you want to do a jump up here, not a dash jump. Make sure, this is the point I want to make pretty clear. Don't do a dash jump, it just makes this harder. Just do a regular jump up to here. This is another jump I had a little trouble with until I got my CRT. And, uh, didn't have to worry about input delay anymore. So, just do a regular jump and a few wall kicks to get up here. Now, first off, we're gonna do the ice full method, which is just break these bottom two blocks by kicking them. You can even do a double kick. Get inside here, hold left all the way. Still holding left and press jump. You'll break, you break all four of the top blocks and now you can get in. Pretty easy. Uh, dash over here, get your E-Tank, start building a charge and swap to Tornado. Um, come out and do a dash kick off the wall. jump over these guys. You want to drop down here in front of this guy. You want to pop your charge turn to take that guy out before you come and get your heart. Because on the way out, his pickaxe is going to take you if you let him, if you leave him alive, if you're fast. So, again, maybe I can just demonstrate him bopping you with the pickaxe. If you leave him alive, this pickaxe he's throwing is going to be right in your way. 
so that's why you want to have the charge tornado ready. To take him out. Now from here, you've got a couple options. You can just tornado these guys out of your way. You may have to avoid some drops, potentially. But uh, you may not. Another thing you can do is you can use ice, which I think is what I used to do when I was doing this route. You still have to use the charge tornado to take out this middle guy so he doesn't screw you over. And then I would swap to ice, take him out, and take him out with ice. Even two buster shots, two dash lemons does the shot, does the trick on these guys as well, they're pretty weak. Pretty simple without boomerangs. <laughs> then we're up here. Now, as far as the iceless route goes, you're gonna have boomerangs, so you wanna use that to your advantage by grabbing this sub tank with a boomerang, letting it follow you all the way over here, and then you also grab this heart with a boomerang. This heart shot is actually kind of difficult. It's pretty precise. What I'm looking at when I'm doing this heart shot, hold on, let me back, let me do this first, the sub tank. The way I do it is one, two, third kick's a dash kick, and I swap and shoot a boomerang after the dash kick. The thing is, you can't swap the boomerang right away because the ice sled's on screen, so you're going to have to kill some time while you're climbing or, um, you know, get high enough so that you can actually despawn the sled. One, two, third is a dash kick and then a boomerang shot immediately after swapping. Um, one, two, three, four, you could do, it would give you a little more breathing room to do it if you're not comfortable. I don't think it has to be a dash kick either, but as you see, sometimes the, the boomerang can go around the sub tank, which is unfortunate. Really don't want that. So, one, two, third's a dash kick, and then another dash kick off the wall. This third kick that I'm doing, one, two, dash kick, I'm letting go of the D-pad so that X drifts away from the wall so that when I shoot the boomerang, it doesn't go around the sub-tank. And sometimes you'll see me do that in my runs where I try to swap early. And then I'm shooting ice to the wall. That is also very unfortunate. Now, once you've got the sub-tank in hand, you'll notice I'm shooting a couple boomerangs at these miners. And that's because if you don't, um, the boomerang of the sub tank can hit the miner and it'll drop the sub tank. So if you shoot him with one boomerang on the way through, then the second boomerang will take him out and you won't drop your sub tank. Now I also shoot this guy. It doesn't always hit him, but sometimes it does, so that's just a precautionary measure. Kick, maybe. <laughs> maybe a good word use for that word. See that? <clears throat> so, um, you can actually phantom grab this part with really good movement. Oop. Sometimes it'll hit that when you're trying to phantom grab. Let me see if I can pull it off once. You can actually phantom grab it using the sub tank, so you get both the sub tank and the heart in one motion. It's pretty good, but you gotta be really fast through here. And a lot of times it will just catch up beforehand. You'll just have to grab it with the boomerang, but... This is something I don't go for, usually. I don't know that it saves a bunch of time. It probably saves a little bit, but... Pop this guy, pop this guy. Anyways, to, to get the phantom grab, look what you're looking for is as you're jumping over this miner, X's bottom heel, as he's jumping, you want to have 
in this. Get out of here with all these pickaxes, dude. Within this, this last post on whatever this orb thing is, if, if his heal is within that post somewhere, you got a pretty good chance at getting the Phantom Grab. This is for when you collect the E-Tank, right? And then you're still holding right, and the heart tank will spawn in your boomerang. Not super critical, but could be kind of nice if you get it. So usually, I'm, I'm somewhere right around there when the sub tank comes in. You have to be super, super precise. No wasted motions. No frames wasted to get this sub tank heart phantom grab combo. Um, anyways, don't depend on that. The other, the way to grab, the way to get the heart boomerang is is pretty tight. So I'm gonna make a safe state right here. Sure. Um, what I'm looking at when I shoot my boomerang is I want X's face pretty much against whatever this in the background is, whatever this thing is, I don't even know, some sort of battery or a tank, I mean it's got a tube, I, I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, I want X's face kind of against the edge of it here. And then I'm looking at this, this thick black line, maybe not a black line, but sort of where it's cut in, right above X's head here, I'm looking at... Maybe the bottom of the wider part. I want to be right around there when I shoot my, my boomerang. This, this, this middle section here, I want to shoot my boomerang like right at the bottom of it. Now, again, boomerangs are going to go down if you're falling when you, when they decide to make their turn out of the end. And they'll go up if you're going up. So, you want to shoot this on the way down right around there, just over the miner's head. And it'll grab the heart. A little too high and you'll miss. A little too low and it'll go up. So, that's what I'm looking at. You can also just use the miner as, you, as your cue. Right above his head, pretty much. Should get it most of the time. Now, what you also have to do here is you have to shoot two more boomerangs to take out that miner. So shoot the one that you that you intend to grab the heart, and then just spam a few more to take him out. And then you'll get to the wall and start climbing. Now, if you miss, you're just gonna have to come back. It's actually a little easier to do at walk speed, so if you miss, you might want to just just sort of turn around and do a walking, jumping boomerang as a backup. But ideally, you'll get it on the way through, like so. <clears throat> Again, just to, to reiterate some of the stuff I talked about with climbing, uh, every 21 frames or so, you want to do a kick. Not dash kicks, except for the one, the last one that's going to take you over the wall, and you want to barely clear the corner. And that, and that happens again here. Pretty simple, basic climbing movement. Here's another conveyor section. Now, for this one, you have another chance at one of those Utu head zips. So what I do to give myself the best chance at the Zutu Zip is I start charging. You don't want a pink shot, so I'll start charging on my first wall kick here, and then I'm looking at this green. You see that one green dot directly below X? I'm looking at that, and again I'm sort of looking at his front knee 
and his dash sprite, and that's where I jump from. So it'll land just on the left edge of this. Now, at the same time, I'm also shooting a blue shot and a lemon. The same idea as before. It'll take out a uh, one of those blue guys while leaving the Uzu head alive for you to zip off of. Um, if you want to just disregard the zip, that's fine too. You can just you can just sort of dash dash off this first ledge and shoot a nice shot to take out whatever it is that's coming. You could probably even shoot a nice shot early like that so you can get a little more. Because dashing off of this onto the conveyor doesn't get you to the left side. Doesn't maximize your conveyor time. Now these conveyors are a little different. You'll notice one, two, the first two are going to the right. And then this one goes left. And then this one again is going to the right. But the problem is when you're dashing and you see all these dust sprites. Those can uh, can increase lag, and um, there's a lot going on in this section with these crushers and the enemies falling all over the place. And so you're gonna generate more lag by dashing across this second conveyor than the amount of time you're gonna save from the added movement bonus. So in order to minimize the lag. You, you, you want to take advantage of the first conveyor because it's not bad yet. But then we want to do some some dash jumps for the rest of the way, minimizing the amount of dust sprites we're creating throughout this whole next section because it can get quite laggy. So what I do is a short hop, short hop. I do two short hops on the first one. Short hop, short hop, big hop. I guess in the middle of this one. Short hop over him. Yeah, so I do, I'll land on the left edge of this because something is going to fall out of this pipe, right? So I want to land on the left edge and jump over whatever this is. This guy's not going to do damage, but the blue guys are. And you don't want to mess up here either because if you do, the blue guys will start shooting lasers and that's going to cause even more lag and might get in your way. So <clears throat> I land on the left side, jump over him to the, about the middle, and then do another one to the edge. And then one from the edge to the middle of this one, and then all the way to this one. Now this one, most everything is behind you, so we can take advantage of this right moving conveyor again by dash dashing across it. Um, here's another section where we we're falling for quite a ways, so we want to do that pre-acceleration thing again. And in order to do that, we want to sort we want to land as far left here as we can, and then we can do a pretty big jump. Like the further left we land on this platform, the bigger jump we can do to pre-accelerate our downward momentum. You know what I'm saying? Because if we if we jump from here to here, we get a baby hop. If we jump from here all the way, we just can probably just dash right off. But if we jump short, we can do a big jump. So ideally, if you're doing you're taking full advantage of this. You're landing on the right far left side, dashing all the way to the right side doing a little short hop and then a big one because you can't make it all the way from here so you gotta land here and then do another hop to start falling downward quickly <clears throat> okay as we're falling down we want to shoot and start building a charge so we're gonna need another ice sled swap the ice whenever we can. Um, for this next section, it's pretty critical that you just do it quickly, because these spiny rolly guys kind of have a random nature to them. They start out the same every time though, so if you do it the same, they won't be in your way. Same with these drops. If you do it the same every time, they won't be in your way. So what that looks like is a full jump over this first one, from pretty tight to this corner, but from down here and you'll clear them every time. And we want to jump down here, short hop across, 
this guy, if you're fast enough, will not have time to throw his thing, and you'll be able to jump right over him. So, it looks like this, kind of. Let me get here, we do a wall kick here, jump over this guy, land down by the ladder here. And we're going to do another full jump over this guy as he's coming to the left. It'll clear him every time. Same as the other one. And then we want to do another shot. Release our ice sled on this guy. This is what the ice sled was for. It was for this guy right here. And then we want to do a dash jump. Land in between these ones. Short hop over him. And then finish out the stage like a so. So, the whole section. Wall kick. Short hop. Big hop. Ice sled. Land in the middle, jump over the second spiny guy, and jump over the last ball and chain guy. You can take out this last ball and chain guy if you so desire with, with a properly placed ice shot, but it's pretty difficult and doesn't really save any time. I mean, you can use it to sort of get to the door without touching the ground, but it's pretty precise. The same, like, a, a couple frames. Because you won't have to do the last dash I put on the ground here, but it's almost pointless. Oh, great. Man, all in all, Mammoth is a pretty straightforward stage. the ground, but um, just do whatever you gotta do. The easiest way by far is to just jump over that last guy. Now here, if you want, you can start a charge as you're jumping over this guy. Because you want to hit Mammoth with either a full charge or a dash lemon to start the fight. And that's going to be sort of a recurring thing as well, because Mavericks have 32 health, their weakness. Now, finally, we're going to start using weaknesses against enemies. Um, their weaknesses do three damage, and the dash lemon does two. So, ten weakness hits is 30 damage, and one dash lemon is going to finish them off or start the fight. Usually, start the fight because um, they travel faster for the most part than most of the other weapons. So, you want to hit them with that right away. Because your tornado is going to take forever to get over there, so you'll start the fight faster. During his eye frames, you can get close and start hitting him with tornadoes. Um, again, boss corridors, pretty simple. You can either just dash through, or you can do your your uh, double tap buffer. Save a handful of frames that way, maybe. If you're fancy. I used to always come in here with a with a blue shot, but. Not necessary. Dash lemons are perfectly fine. Make sure you're dashing into the door, though. Because, as we talked about before, when your dash is cut off by a... Um, by a cutscene, such as walking into a door, or getting on Eagle's Elevator, or a... Um, capsule? That sort of dash status is maintained. So you'll notice that that lemon I shot, I wasn't dashing when I shot him, but it did two damage. And that's due to that effect of your dash being cut off by the door transition. Um, Mammoth has got a few attacks. He throws these goop things. He changes the direction of the conveyor. He can jump at you, which uh, can cause you to fall on your butt. And he can shoot fire at you. The only one that actually hurts you is the fire. Or, like, obviously contact damage. It's a really easy fight, so I'm not gonna get too crazy with it. But I do wanna know. Uh, obviously, regular shots are gonna do one damage. Dash lemons are gonna do two. Uh, the green shot, let's see, what does the green shot do? Was that one? Yeah, that's one damage. And then the uh, full charge. 
Or the blue shot is gonna do two. And then tornadoes are gonna do three. Um, you can actually cut off Mammoth's trunk with three boomerangs. Totally pointless in the speedrun. And totally detrimental in a casual run because now it takes away his ability to do all of his non damaging attacks and leaves him only with his damaging attacks left. Pretty dumb. But, uh, anyways, to start the fight, just mash out some lemons because that first one's gonna be a dash lemon. As long as you dash through the door. And then you wanna swap the tornado and you can get double hits. With these tornadoes. It's a little trickier when the conveyor's moving to the left. But, uh... It's still totally doable. In this fight, you can basically keep Mammoth on iframes the entire time. So you only got one hit there. But, um, one thing I want to know is that you kind of want to put your tornadoes kind of high on him. Just in case he jumps. Because that way, it'll still be hitting him while he's jumping. And he's always going to jump to you right away, so shoot your lemons and then jump backwards. You can hit him with a tornado. And then you just want to maintain hitting him with these double hits. If you're concerned, you can sort of wait until he comes off iframes. Let's hit him with another tornado and you're almost guaranteed a double hit that way. Whereas, um, optimally, you're gonna sort of, you're gonna want to put the tornado on him just before his iframes run out, so that he never comes off of iframes. He just gets hit immediately as soon as he's off iframes. It's a little riskier when he's uh, when the conveyor's moving to the left. Pretty straightforward fight though. Just dodges jumps, dodges fire. That's all you gotta worry about. And make sure you're putting your tornadoes high enough to where if he jumps, he's still gonna get hit by him. Um, one last thing, if you can, since the stage is wide enough, get a mostly off-screen kill that's going to mitigate some of the lag from his explosion. So, that's something to look for. Obviously it's not always going to be possible because sometimes he's just going to be in the middle of the stage and you defeat him. This is bad. This is embarrassing. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to ever have a walk of shame on Mammoth stage because it's so wide you should almost always be in the middle. So. Um, so one way you can go about sort of ensuring that is if it if he starts moving the uh, the conveyor to the left. Just not this time, but get a good off-screen kill this time. If he starts moving the conveyor to the left, um, you can shoot a tornado and then take advantage of the super long like, double hit. Get on the other side of him. Just take a deep boost to get on the other side of him. Of course, I'm gonna switch it back the other way, but. See, I, mean, I missed a double hit there. It'll happen, it's not a huge deal. But it's not ideal either. So like now, maybe I can turn with one and then I go to the other side. And now I can still be in the center. Anyways, that wraps up uh, Mammoth. Pretty straightforward stage. One of the easier stages in the game with an easy boss fight. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope it was informational. And uh, next time, next, we've got uh, Spark Mandrill. Gonna be our next. Part six will be Spark Mandrel. Spark Mandrel is a little tougher stage. Uh, it's got some more diverse strats, uh, fast, slow stuff. Some tough ideas in Mandrel stage. So, anyways, until next time. Peace.